If you've ever wanted to learn how to set up an activator gun like this or spray activator correctly for hydro dipping, then this is the video for you. Stick around, show you how we do it. Whether you're new to hydro dipping or you've been doing it for a little while, you've probably already figured out that spraying activator is probably one of the most difficult parts of this hobby. Having the proper spray gun set up and using the proper technique can make or break your project. Either it's gonna turn out looking really awesome if you did everything right, or you're gonna wind up really frustrated probably throwing stuff out the side of the garage, in the front yard, kicking, screaming, and probably saying some bad words that are gonna make your neighbors look across the fence like, what is wrong with that person? Ask me how I know. Been there, done that. We just recently did a lesson in our online training class that talked all about how to set up a spray gun properly to spray activator and what techniques that you should be using. If you're not familiar with our online training program, I'll leave a link to a video right up here where you can go check out our video all about our online training class. Now that lesson in particular seemed to have a lot of really good feedback and it helped out a lot of people solve some of their activator gun problems and their actual spraying technique problems. So what I did is I took some of the highlights from that video lesson and I have put them together for you guys here on YouTube. Now I'm not going to give you the entire lesson. It's like 35, 40 minutes long, but if you want the entire thing and you want to learn more in-depth stuff like we're going to talk about in this video, then you'll need to go check out our online training course. Nevertheless, it's a lot of really good information. I hope that it helps somebody. Here is a small sample from that training lesson. And then from there, we'll go into talking about the actual activator guns themselves. At the end of the activator gun, you are going to need some type of regulator. You can either use an analog regulator like this one has or a digital regulator like this one has. Either one of them will work just fine. Now, when it comes to choosing an activator gun, here is what you need to remember. These guns are not designed to spray activator. An activator is a liquid that is thin or if not thinner than water. These guns are designed to spray paint and paint is thicker than activator. So they atomize a little bit differently than what you really need. Now my GPI has a hard cup on it, which is this hard plastic cup up here at the top. And since I only use this gun for activator and it stays right here by my tank, then it's fine just to keep the little hard cup that it comes with. Just make sure that this hole on top never gets blocked. You do have to be careful though because if you turn this thing on its side or upside down it will leak out of that hole so that's just something to be aware of. You're fine to spray like this though because the air hole is still up at the top so that's not a worry. The other option you have is to use the PPS system and I have the PPS adapter and the cup system on this Air Gunza which we're going to be demonstrating with today and you can leave activator in these PPS cups for several months and never have any issues. I know some people use them for years on end and never change out the cups and they seem to work just fine. All right let's go over how to set up one of these air guns. This is the Air Gunza and this one has both of your control knobs here on the back. If you have a gun that has one on the side it is usually the fan. So up here here on this gun this is the fan control and this one right here is the fluid control and you know that because your fluid control is going to be in line with your needle right here that comes out the tip just trace that line straight back and that's going to be your fluid control so your first adjustment is going to be your fan size what you want to do is you want to take this and you want to turn it counterclockwise all the way out when I say out, I mean counterclockwise as in open. The more you turn this backwards counterclockwise, the more open and the further away from the gun this knob is gonna become. That makes your fan set as wide as it can possibly go. So we're gonna turn it all the way open. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our fluid knob and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna turn it out all the way until the spring pops out. So you see right there, it's got that little spring in there. What you want to do is just turn it in until it is just barely threaded in there. That's all you need. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your trigger and you're gonna squeeze it all the way. You're gonna hold it. Now you don't wanna put a whole lot of pressure on this, just enough pressure to hold this back. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna continue running this in until you feel that needle starting to move and you'll see it here in just a second when I get up close to it. There it is right there. If I continue doing this, it is going to push the trigger out. So here it is full closed. And if I keep pushing it, keep twisting it, it is going to push that trigger further out. All right. It's not what we want. We want this thing wide open. So pull this trigger all the way back, let this out until it spins freely and then all the way in until it touches. So after we've got those two set to full open, the next thing you wanna do is hook up your air and see what your pressure reading is. All right, so mine is reading at 48.5. So 48.5 PSI is the amount of air that is inside this hose. This is your static pressure, all right? This is without me squeezing the trigger or anything. If you pull the trigger all the way, 
what you're doing is you're allowing air and fluid to come out. If you only squeeze it halfway, you're only allowing air to come out. When we set our pressure on this gun, you only want to squeeze it halfway. Do not squeeze it all the way. So let's give it a half squeeze and see what our pressure is. We are at 15.5 PSI. What we're going to do is we are going to crank that down to about, I like to run mine around 12. Let's check it again. 12.5. And there we are right at about 12. Anywhere in the 12 to 14 range is about where you want to be. So when you let go of the trigger, it's going to go back to your static pressure, which is whatever the pressure is in the gun. And in my case, it's 48.9, 49. And then squeeze it halfway, it goes down to about 12, 12 and a half. Squeeze it all the way, it's going to drop even further, which is 5.5. But we're not concerned what the pressure is when you squeeze the trigger all the way. We're only concerned with the pressure at half squeeze. All right, so what I've got for you guys set up is just a piece of craft paper. Just any kind of paper or a cardboard box will work just fine. What we're going to do is we're going to test our spray pattern and see if we need to make any adjustments. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your paper, hang it up somewhere, and then just hold your activator gun back away from the paper, about 12 to 16 inches, somewhere in that range, because that's about how far you're going to be spraying your activator. And then just give it a good squeeze and see what the pattern looks like. All right, so really quickly before this fades, I'm going to go ahead and trace this out. All right, so here's what we've got. We've got this really, really heavy spot right here in the middle, and then we've got a lighter area just here to the outside. This is not a bad looking spray pattern, and it's about six to eight inches wide, which is pretty normal for your budget style spray guns. What we're going to do is we're going to make an adjustment on the fan and see if we can get that to tighten up just a little bit so that you don't have as much little overspray on this and we can kind of get that area to bring in just a hair and see if we can get a thicker spray pattern. So what I'm going to do is on this one, it has the numbers one through four on there. The number one is pointing up right now. It doesn't matter what number is pointing up on your gun, but we're going to start with this number one and we're going to turn this in about a half turn. So the one was up. Now I've turned it to where it's down and I'm turning this in so that it's tightening the pattern up. I'm actually pulling the fan in. If you turn it out, which would be counterclockwise, it's going to open the pattern back up to where we were. So now that we've made that adjustment, let's repeat and see what we get. All right, so it did bring the pattern in just a hair, not a lot, but it did make this thicker area where there was a lot more dense of activator being sprayed it made it spread out a little bit more. So we're going to make one more adjustment. We're going to turn this in one more half of a turn. So we went from where the one was pointing up and then we made it point down. So that was a half turn in. That's what we did on this one. Now we're going to turn in another half turn. So we're a full turn in now. All right. So this is what I was looking for. Now we've got a nice clean pattern with hardly any overspray coming off the sides and everything is nice and thick right here in the middle. This is about the size pattern that you're looking for. It's still about the same distance as this one is, but the spray is much more dense. Now, if we were to turn this in even more, we're actually going to start seeing the pattern go smaller. So let's try it one more time. All right, as you can see, it is getting smaller. We'll turn it in one more time. And you can see each time it's going to get a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller and it's going to put more activator in a smaller area. So as you can see, it wasn't running over here and then now over here it is starting to run. So at this setting right here is the perfect setting. So we'll go back out, which was one complete turn. Just reconfirm that we're spraying the same as before. Just like that, just like that. Probably was a little bit too close on that one. So that is the setting that we need. Once you have this set up, you don't ever need to touch it again. There's no reason to ever mess with that fan setting or the fluid setting, but we have not touched this fluid knob at all. The only thing we've touched is the fan. All right, I'm just gonna give this a quick spray so I can demonstrate something to you real quick. So there is the approximate size of our pattern. Now, when we go to make our actual activator passes, we have to remember that right in here is the only consistent portion of the pattern. 
all right in here is the same thickness about all the way through. The rest of your pass from here to here and then from here to here is going to have a little bit less activator than what is right here because of the shape of the pattern. So when you go to make your next pass, you need to make sure that you are overlapping enough to compensate for that. Well, the way that you do that is by making sure that your next pass overlaps by almost 50%. So that your next heaviest portion is here, and this section right in here is going to overlap. And same thing right in here. I can't draw this all on this paper, but you get the picture. This is your thick part. You need to make sure that this section right in here is what gets overlapped. Now everybody's activator passes may look a little bit different, but this is a general rule of what I use when I'm training people on how to do activator. I usually hold mine up about shoulder level. Let's check the actual measurement on that and see what it is. So shoulder level for me puts the tip right at about 14 inches, which is about what I tell people. Anywhere from 12 to 16 inches is about the right height you wanna be. You don't want to spray so that your fan is pointing like this at an angle and you don't want to spray like this because you might get some activator run out the top of your cup. You want to spray so that this fan is perfectly 90 degrees to here. So the way you figure out how wide your fan is going to be at different heights is go ahead and pick your height, spray some activator and pull your fan all the way to the edge. Now what you can see is mine stops right about there. So what I'll do is I'll pull this in and then double check it. And I know that my fan pattern ends about right there. Now, if you're a visual person, you can just remember what this measurement is in your head so you know that that is about the width of your fan. If you are more of a numbers person, then you can actually measure it out. Mine is about 15 inches. So I know that every 15 inches is as far as my fan can spray by itself, but this section and this section is going to be slightly underactivated compared to what's in the middle. Remember how we showed you that little cat eye pattern. So actually what I need to focus on spraying is about this much, which is about 10 inches, which leaves me a couple of inches on each side for overlap. Now when you're moving the gun, you're going to want to move at a speed of one foot per second. The easiest way to do that is to put a ruler on the side of the tank or a piece of tape every foot so you know how far a foot is. Start right here and count 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, and at every 1,000 mark you should be at the next foot. So I'll demonstrate that for you so you can see what one of my regular activator passes looks like. Now, if it is a film that requires a lot of activator, what I will do is I will use that same speed and then come to the side and go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now, remember, your fan only covers so much width. So when you're doing this, you need to make sure that if you're going to do this little tic-tac-toe thing, that you're moving at that same width every single time so that you're getting correct activator coverage. So now you know the basic setup for an activator gun. It's not rocket surgery and it's not different for any gun. Every single gun that I get gets set up the exact same way. It doesn't matter if it's a $500 GPI or a $10 Harbor Freight Special. They all get set up in that exact same process that I just showed you. If you would like some more information about our online training course, I've got a link down in the description box below where you can go check that out. Also be sure to check out the link to the video down in the description box below that covers every Everything you need to know about our online training course. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's roll the bloopers. Now the moment you've all been waiting for. What is it? I don't even know. Why do I do this so late at night? Oh my god. Go check out the links in the in the I almost said comments. I go check out the links in the comments. There ain't no links in the freaking comment section between whether you have can be the so if you want to learn about more and want, want to learn about more and learn about more mason be the difference between you wanna if you wanna if you want to not wanna want if you want to see the bloopers this is going to be in the bloopers we did a lesson in our are um the the why is that such a natural instinct like even when i'm telling myself don't i, I still do it every single time it's like it's like a drill you can't help it. every time you pick up a drill <clears throat> of having a super awesome looking hydro dip thing thing hydro dip thing we we have a hydro dip thing we made a hydro dip thing today
I know the mic is picking all of that up. That... Mm. Oh. I've had like six energy drinks in 25 minutes. I can smell the color 11, but I'm still so freaking tired. Oh God, when I do this so late at night.